Joe Bob says to play a drinking game while watching Hogzilla, that's what I'm gonna do. Hi everyone, I'm Adam, the culture critic. I scare because I... <sighs> so, last week, or over the weekend, uh, a movie was premiered that on uh, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. It's a pretty good episode. I, I recommend it. The movie, on the other hand, not so much. Hogzilla was a movie that Joe Bob Briggs was involved in, or well, starred in, back in 2007 and it hadn't and it's now just recently been released uh if you want to know some of the story i then i highly recommend the episode uh, because i'm not gonna i don't want to really get into it but through some uh work uh i'm getting some strings pulled diana prince aka darcy was able to get the movie finished and premiered on Joe Bob to his surprise. Because it's a movie he really hoped he never see he would he hoped would never see the light of day. For good reason. Hogzilla is it is one of those I wouldn't even call it a sci-fi channel movie. This is Bottom of the barrel, five dollar bin at Walmart DVD level of quality, and man, man, I you feel for Joe Bob? You really, really want to drink alongside him because it this is a bad bad movie so the story is a group of this tabloid news group goes down to Florida Central Florida which turns out to be just not even that far away from Mar-a-Lago <laughs> uh, to hunt for this giant boar called that's labeled Hogzilla and they come across Joe Bob, who's been in there for years, in, in the woods for years. And one by one, they're getting picked off by, well, Hogzilla. <sighs> There's so much wrong with this movie. <laughs> Let me, let me just get this out of the way. Joe Bob Briggs is not the best actor. He's, but, he's charming and charismatic enough to be able to carry, carry a movie. In fact, the movie before Hogzilla premiered was another one, which I'm, which I might review later down the road, was Scare Package. He makes a gratuitous cameo in that movie. And he's great. He's hilarious. He is Joe Bob in this. Here he plays he plays this mound man who's just way too good for this movie. Like Joe Bob really, really tries to make this work, even though they're even though it's in vain, but he is way too good for this. Like 
oh god, what, what's what's the line he says? It's like, there ain't no hogs, demons and devils, sure, but there ain't no hogs out here. <laughs> like lines like that would make me laugh. Because, like, yeah, he can deliver them. He delivers them flat, but he delivers them in a way where you can just tell he has such contempt for this, for this movie. But he actually tries to put some effort into it, and he's not in it enough. He is in, he's top billing. He's supposed to be the star of this movie. And he is not in it enough. He's in it like maybe 15 minutes. At least. Probably more likely less than that, honestly. The rest of the movie follows the tabloid team who com who's composed of a bitchy producer A douchebag uh, anchor, reporter, your typical stoner tech guy, <laughs> this marine, <laughs> uh, a veterinarian. And you're f atypical fat guy. And my God, are are their fat jokes galore? Like they're oh my God. I hate. Like Joe Bob said, take a shot every time. Every time you hear a fat joke. Oh my God! If I did, if I did that, I would have died of, po of alcohol poisoning. And the only beer I had was freaking hard mics, and and those are just sodas, and I still think I would have died. Oh my God! Like you feel, you feel for for the fat guy. You feel for him because he is just the butt of the joke. Like. Seems like the writer slash director just really, really hates fat people. And so she wanted to get a fat guy who was okay with being called a pig every five fucking seconds. And th just so she could get it out of her system. I don't know because, oh my god. The... The <laughs> the rest of the cast is unlikable. It, it reminds it's almost like a even cheaper budgeted version of the ritual, which came out a couple of years ago, which just had a bunch of angry bros screaming at each other for ninety minutes. That's this movie, except there's more people in it. And yeah, no, no, that's that's it. It's just more people is the same bullshit. They scream, they they throw insults at each other. There is nothing to these characters. There is nothing likable about them. I don't I don't even remember half their names. And I you and you would not, I couldn't even tell you what their job was unless they actually say something about it. Like, oh, I was supposed to be top anchor. It's like, you're, you work for a tabloid company like TMZ. You're not going to be top anchor. Like, it's like, I, I didn't even know the bitchy producer was a producer. I thought she was another reporter. It, it, it just, like, I am dead set convinced that these guys were sent here by their tabloid comp by the company they work for just so they can die because they are so unlikable. Like the company couldn't can't stand 
any of them. So we're like, here, let's just tell them about this Hogzilla story, throw them out there, and let them die. Whether it's from them killing each other or from a giant pig, whatever. That is, that's how, that's how much content there is for these characters. Oh my, uh, I just, and not to mention the budget, apparently the budget for this movie is a million dollars. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. It, it was a million dollars. Oh, please, that, that movie was barely even a th 10,000. There's no way that movie cost, this movie cost a million dollars. Like, like, I mean, if they cost a million dollars, I'm sure the pig would have looked better. Hell, they would have actually had a full, full-on pig they could use and not just the head. Guy, you thought, you thought the shark and jaws looked fake? Wait till you see this pig. Like, I mean, if you can see it, it's so fucking dark in that mo in this movie you can barely see what it looks like all you hear is <laughs> you hear that you 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 see the kills from its point of view because you know they couldn't they couldn't afford to make good kills i can make good kills at that kind of budget I mean, it it it, do, it doesn't hurt that to, to go to a store, buy several severed limbs to a Halloween store, buy several several severed limbs. Well, oh, there's a tongue twister, and make it look like that the that Hogzilla ate somebody. Not hard. That's the problem I have with this movie. This movie, it feels like you're watching a student film. And that's, and I'm not going to knock student films because I am one, I was one of those guys. I made bad student films, which will never see the light of day. But the problem is I would have written a better script. I would have written better characters. This feels like the director wanted to capitalize on the Hogzilla story at that time and wanted and just wrote a first draft and tried to get it out of the way. Problem is, it's 2007, the Hogzilla story happened three years back. I guarantee you no one was going to remember that story. I mean, it's it took it took Full Moon Studios like what? 3 months to make two Corona Zombie movies. <laughs> I mean, okay, bad example. At least. I'll you know what? I'll get I'll give this movie that at least it shot its own footage and not ripped it from other movies. I'll give it that. That is the one, that and Joe Bob are the one positives I can give it. I can definitely give Hogzilla that. The, but I, I can't give it anything else. The, cin the cinematography is bad, of course. The characters are, are insufferable. The jokes are lowbrow, and this is coming from a guy who really like who can sit through lowbrow humor. But when your jokes are nothing but fat, fat insults, you got nothing. Except a serious problem towards fat people, and yet. I can't, 
I can't not recommend watching this. The best way you can, though, is not by itself. Indeed, watch it. Watch the last drive-in episode. Right now, that's the only way you can until Shudder decides to release the movie on its own. But the reason why I can't not recommend it is because of Diana Prince, who pulled strings. Like, she pulled strings to get this movie finished and presented. That woman is a godsend. Like, I, I respect her. She is, she is the kind of person you want to talk to, you want to hang out with and watch movies and drink with. She is... She is amazing. And it is amazing that she was able to get this movie released. <laughs> There's a reason why I wear this Darcy shirt every Friday. Because she is that awesome. And this is, this is more of a curiosity flick, in a way. This is a movie that you want to see just because you know the story behind how it was finished and how it was released. Just... Out of pure curiosity, that's why you why I can't not recommend it. But other than that, this movie is garbage. This movie is garbage. And I'm pretty sure Diana is aware of it, even though I know she likes it. But I'm on Joe Bob's side here. This movie is is not worth watching on its own. Unless you have alcohol. I can I can watch the holiday special sober and that is hard to do. <laughs> but this I feel like this needs something in your system to get through primarily because of the insufferable characters. Uh So what do I give Hogzilla? Well, I give the last drive-in episode a ten out of ten. It's it's a great it's a it's a great episode. It's a fun episode to watch, but the movie in and of itself, I give a two out of ten. It is that fucking bad. <laughs> it it I know this was real, this was this is this is probably the worst movie of this year that I have seen. It's it's I'm saying this year because it, it, it because it was the, because of what Diana had to do to get it released. It it was released. So therefore it is the worst movie of this year. I hated this movie. Uh, <laughs> well, that's it for me. If you guys want to, if you guys want to catch me online, I am on the Slasher app at NOES Two Rules. That is NOES Two Rules with a Z. I am the culture critic. I get scared because I don't care. And God help me if I have to watch another movie like Hogzilla again. Uh, bye.